Hey guys, it's Ray. Welcome to my channel. Nintendo launched the brand new Nintendo Switch Lite yesterday, which is not only the budget option of the Nintendo Switch Lite products, but also seen as an effective replacement of the Nintendo 2DS and 3DS XL line of products. Which raises the question, is the system worth it? Let's check it out. So before the launch of this little system, I was legit excited for it for quite a few months. In fact, I was still excited for it yesterday when I was playing on it. And last night, I played on it for around 5-6 to six hours, pulled my thoughts together, and actually reached the conclusion that... I actually don't recommend you guys, first time Switch buyers, going out to buy this over the Nintendo Switch. And there's quite a few reasons for that. So, just a little disclaimer, this video is largely aimed towards those people that's never owned a Switch in their life and thinking whether they want to pick up a Nintendo Switch Lite as their first Nintendo Switch Lite product. So if you already own a Switch, I'll mention that later. Let's start by talking about the things I love about the system. I don't want to back the system from the very start. So firstly, what I like about this system is its durability and its color. Obviously, color is incredibly subjective. I do feel like it looked better than the Switch, but that's up to you guys. What's unarguable here is the durability. So because this is one whole system, instead of having separate Joy-Cons, this system is going to be much more durable. If you accidentally drop it, it's either going to, well, very unfortunately break, or it's going to be fine. Whereas with my Nintendo Switch I bought three years ago, I accidentally dropped it, the system was fine but the Joy-Con grip was quite loose, so I could often just accidentally push it and it would detach, which, as time goes, got quite annoying. So with this little system, as long as they fix the analog drift so that it doesn't drift after 6 or 7 months, which god I hope they do, please fix that with the Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons as well, that's incredibly needed. But anyways, as long as the analogs don't drift, this system should be a lot more durable compared to the actual Nintendo Switch. Secondly, the Nintendo Switch Lite is a much lighter console by weight. So referring to my last video, the Nintendo Switch weighs around 410 to 420 grams, whereas the Nintendo Switch Lite is around 270 grams, which is around a 33% decrease in weight. So obviously for me, who's a male and an adult, it doesn't make a huge difference. But for kids or younger players, this could allow them to play on the system in portable mode more comfortably for quite a few hours. And... That's about all the good things I have to say about the system. Oh, I'm going to be hated after this video. So now, I'll talk about the things about this system that makes me feel like it's a slight ripoff. Firstly, and probably most importantly, I want to talk about price. So I know for a fact in the US, this system is 200 US dollars and the Nintendo Switch is 300, which is a 50% markup and is considered quite decent. Here in Australia, it's around the same story. This system is 330 Australian dollars and the actual Nintendo Switch is around 470. But if you think about the fact that this system doesn't have TV output, so it doesn't come with the dock, but the dock itself is worth quite a bit of money. So in the US, a dock is 70 US dollars. Here in Australia, you have to pay up to 130 Australian dollars just for a dock. That kind of means even if you're set on playing it portably and never want to hook it up to your TV, you can easily resell your dock at maybe half its value. Let's take half its value. So that means realistically, in the US, you'll be spending around $265 for an upgrade to the Switch, and here in Australia, around 405 Australian dollars. Which means by math, the real markup from the Nintendo Switch Lite to the Nintendo Switch is actually around 30%. So if you're set on buying the Nintendo Switch Lite, just remember for as little as 65 US dollars, you can upgrade from this system to the actual Nintendo Switch, which offers a better gaming experience in almost every single aspect, and allows you to keep that ability of TV output, so if one day you move or you want to hook it up to the TV, you have that option. This raises the question, where exactly is the Nintendo Switch Lite worse compared to the Nintendo Switch? So first of all, the biggest major feature the Nintendo Switch Lite is missing is, well, the ability to switch. So while this system uses the same USB Type-C charging port compared to the Switch, it does not have TV output at all. Which means even if you got a third-party dock, or if you already own a Switch and have a dock, 
it's not going to connect this system up to the TV no matter what. Secondly, the one system aspect of it is kind of like a double-edged sword. It's a good thing about it, but it hurts it in another way. So because it is one whole system, it doesn't have separate Joy-Cons, which means it would be quite a bit of hassle if you want to play two-player games. If this is your only Nintendo Switch Line product, it means you gotta go out there and spend 120 Australian dollars and buy an extra pair of Joy-Cons, which is quite a bit of hassle considering when you do that, all you're doing is playing two-player games on this tiny 5.5 inch screen. Also worth mentioning is that as this system doesn't have either IR scanner or HD rumble, there are some games you straight up cannot play. According to iMore.com, there are 6 Nintendo Switch games where you straight up cannot play on the Nintendo Switch Lite, as listed here. And there are heaps of games where you can play, but the gaming experience is substantially downgraded. Take The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild as an example, which I still argue up to date is the best Nintendo Switch game out there. While you can still use motion control and shoot arrows, that's not a problem, but with certain shrines that asks you to use motion control to solve puzzles, it can get seriously annoying and tedious. Like the footage you're seeing now, with the Nintendo Switch Lite, puzzles like these are not only tedious, but almost virtually impossible to do. Whereas on the Nintendo Switch, all I have to do is take off my Joy-Cons and here I go. So from that, I would argue that there is a downgrade from the Nintendo Switch to the Nintendo Switch Lite in gaming performance. Apart from the major features, there's also two other features of the Nintendo Switch Lite, which I thought was at its advantage, but actually turned out kind of against it. First one, and probably the more important one out of the two, is battery life. So yes, if you compare this system to the Nintendo Switch V1, this does offer a longer battery life. Like, I think I played Zelda on it for around 4-5 to five hours yesterday, and it was doing absolutely fine. So, good job there. But, Nintendo decided to use the same chip in their Nintendo Switch V2, which means if you don't have a Switch, and you want to go out there and buy the Nintendo Switch Line product with the longest battery life, you want to buy that Nintendo Switch V2 because that bad boy has around 7 hours of battery compared to 5 hours on this system. So, I don't really understand. One of the major selling points of the Nintendo Switch Lite has inevitably been beaten thanks to Nintendo themselves. But I guess I can't back them, they gave us a better Nintendo Switch as well and uh, who's gonna say no to that? Second thing is portability, which is kind of what this system was designed for. But through real life use, I actually took it out for a couple of hours last night, it's not actually hugely different compared to the Nintendo Switch. So yes, this system is quite a bit smaller, it's equivalent to a Switch without one side of the Joy-Con, but in terms of portability, uh, I'd say it's around 10% easier to carry around. Because the system is smaller, but it's not a clamshell design, so you don't just want to shove it in your pocket or in your bag without a case. So, it really kind of follows the same process, where you still need to bring it, put it in a case, and then put it in your bag, because you do not want to put this system in your bag without a case. That's most likely going to destroy the analog sticks. So in terms of portability, which is also one of its major selling points, it's actually the same thing. So, what exactly do I think of this product? So I think as a 3DS replacement product, it does inevitably have its own charm. So I think if you want to pick up your first Nintendo Switch Lite product, and you want to pick up a Nintendo Switch Lite, just be really certain on two things. Firstly, you're mainly going to be a traveling gamer and a solo gamer. You're not interested in party games, two player games, and etc etc etc. You just want to play Pokemon and Fire Emblem like you once did on your Nintendo 3DS or 2DS XL. Secondly, just be 100% sure that you pick this system up as a 3DS replacement product. Which means you will never ever connect this to the TV, and in cases like The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, you are happy to suffer from these potential downgrades in gaming experience. Honestly, from the eyes of a commerce student, I legit think Nintendo is trying to pull off some twisted version of decoy pricing. I might need to explain that term. So decoy pricing in a nutshell is essentially bringing out a product that is not as worth it as the original product to make the original product look really worth it. And actually encourage people to buy the original product, which in this case is the Nintendo Switch. Think about it, if you're considering buying this system and you just do the math, 
I'll use US currency here, you'd realize, oh, for an extra 100 US dollars, I can get TV output, I can get HD rumble, IR scanner, detachable Joy-Cons, ability to play two-player games without any extra accessories, and that all comes at only 100 bucks. Immediately, the Nintendo Switch in your head is not a $300 console. It is $100 more than the Nintendo Switch Lite, offering so much more. And then you start thinking, it's only $100 more, it comes with a dock, it comes with better battery, it comes with better gaming experience, and there will be some of you that will take out those extra $100 for the actual Switch, which Nintendo have succeeded. I also feel like they'll trick parents, because Christmas is happening in less than like 3 months, I can see parents bringing in their 10 year old into the store and going like, oh, you don't have Nintendo 3DS's anymore? Well my son has been playing the 3DS for the past 4 years, what do I buy him now? And the sales guy would be like, here you go. And then, another sale by Nintendo. So, good job. Revisiting my point. If you are a first time Nintendo Switch buyer, just remember I strongly recommend buying the actual Nintendo Switch. For just $100 more... Okay, $100 is quite a lot of money in this context. For just... For just... Can't get over that. For $100 more, you will be able to get so much more features on the Nintendo Switch compared to the Nintendo Switch Lite, and it really offers you that premium and holistic gaming experience. If you already own a Switch like me, or if you are a family gamer where you have multiple kids in the family fighting over that one Switch, then the Nintendo Switch Lite might be a good idea as an individual Switch for your boys or for you as a traveling option. I mean, I'm not trying to back on the console. For a 3DS XL price range console, this is a really solid piece of hardware. Wait, actually, this system is actually cheaper. Because the 3DS XL also comes in at 200 US dollars, but it does not come with a charger. And this system comes at 200 US dollars and comes with everything. Wow. I mean, it doesn't change the argument, but that's impressive. Nintendo, you realize that a charger goes well with a console. Anyways, I got carried away. For a 3DS price range console, this is not a bad piece of hardware. It's just that when you compare it to the higher, more premium Switch V2, you'd realize that it's probably not the most worth a product out of these two systems. So unless you are a super, super budget gamer, or you are 100% sure of what you want out of this piece of hardware, I strongly recommend the Switch just because it offers you the whole package of all the gaming experience you can have from a switch. With that said though, I will spend the next short while with this little guy instead of my actual Nintendo Switch. And speaking of the free giveaway, well, let's just say we're not close. So, uh, change of plan, okay? So this video and the video from yesterday combines to reach 10,000 views or if the channel reaches 200 subscribers, I will still give out a free Nintendo Switch Lite and that is a substantial downgrade in difficulty. Let's hope we get there, and if we don't, well, I'll find a way to give out something. Trust me, I will. So if you want a chance to win one of these, just remember, all you have to do is like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment in the comment section down below on what you think of these systems. Have you bought it yet? How's it coming along for you? Are you thinking about buying one? Do you agree with my thoughts? Leave your thoughts in the comment section down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.